I'm going to talk about Mark Herman's Churchill. Big Three Struggle for Peace from GMT Games. And this was sent to me from GMT. Compliments. Thank you so much for GMT for sending me this to, uh, to play and review and talk about. I've already done an unboxing video and you can check out down below and see what I, my unboxing video is. But this right here, I just got done playing... Uh, the training scenario, I've played this a few times and decided I'd, I'd want to do the training scenario again um, and share my thoughts after playing it. Um, I played this solo, so I wanted to share my thoughts of both the game, the game play, the game components, um, and generally what I think about this. So let, let's start with the components and, and let's start with the rules. The rules are really not that complex. Uh, if you if you played Mark Herman's Pericles, then this is easier than that. I find this would be a little bit lighter weight than Pericles. To me, Pericles is, has a similar setup. There's a political side and a military side, but the military side, both are in Pericles, in my opinion, are a little bit more involved. The political is a little bit more involved. And the the war, you know, how things transfer from the political side in in, in the in the um, manner of orders uh, is a little bit more involved in Pericles. This one is a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more abstract. And so the rules, there's only 17 pages of rules. You know, there's some notes. Uh, there's the scenarios. If you want to play the solitaire game, that's about a that's a um, that's a page here. I think on was it 17 or something here. Uh, on page 23, just one page for the solitaire rules. There's the secret agenda variant. That one really is, I, I would say, for multiplayer. And that's where you take, you know, some of these counters here. And there's secret variants. And each side gets three. And you get um, uh, five points each if you control that region. You know, that's the kind of the political, you know, the, the political and the... Uh, clandestine side of the the game. Uh, so really only looking at about 17 pages of rules. It's dual column. It's legible. There's designer notes. There's play notes. It's relatively easy to go through. Um, there's really not an example in here. I think there's like a little bit of a playthrough, but um, generally di digestible. Uh, as I said, this is easier to access than Pericles. And the other one, other game in the Great Statesman series, uh, Versailles, this is probably uh, maybe a little bit more complex than that. It, it's hard to compare because Versailles is just a totally different game. Versailles 1919 is is really more mostly political. There's a little bit of military going on, but not much. Uh, and it's really more about card play. And it, it really is a different game. To me, this one is, uh, uh, you know, it shows you, it has... Um, some similarities to Pericles. I think Pericles came after this, so Pericles is a little bit more involved. But um, uh, this one's a, to me is a little bit more accessible and easier to get into. But then again, it's it is more abstract. Um, the cards, the cards are are fine cards. They're typical GMT stock. They're legible. Uh, you have the number there. That's the uh, conference points where you can use the advance issues on this track, or if you want to debate, you can push it back on this track. This is a the politics is basically a tug of war situation where you use these cards to move the issues back and forth. And there, there's your conference issues, and the conference issues uh, more often than not translate to what's how how things uh, move over to this board, which is your military display. Also, the cards are going to have attributes. Sometimes they give you bonuses based on the issue, or you also can have some negative effects. Um, you know, some some of the Russians get get uh, detained or arrested or assassinated, and then some of the other leaders over here die off. Uh, you're playing over ten conferences. They're the historical conferences that took place. Over time, if you're playing the training scenario, scenario you're only playing the last um, the last ten conferences, and these basically set the stage at the beginning of the game. They're going to tell you what what how the board is set up, you know, with the uh, with Churchill and with um, or the Russia, uh, UK, Russia, United States. And then there's 
you know, what's going on uh, in, um, in on the battle stage, whether it's in the uh, in the Asia or it's in Europe, and then something that's going on maybe with partisans or or so, something else with with some of these minor uh, countries. And so, you know, the, the 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 secondary political or Palmel type situation. So those set the stage, and then you're into the political, which is you're using um, your you're basically these cards to move issues back and forth. And then, of course, your leaders are going to kind of trump the day. They're the, the biggest number, and they uh, can move issues um, a, a lot more effectively. But, but you know, once you use them, they become inactive, and then other cards play off of that, whether they're inactive or not. So the cards, you know, good stock. Counters are typical. Uh, GMT counters, they're all pre-rounded, they punch out easy, they're good thick stock, uh, the counters are fine, there's not a lot of counters in this game, uh, a lot of the counters you use are these uh, uh, offensive support that, that translate from your production over to offensive support over here and help you get die rolls as you're advancing the front. Um, then you have the blocks, which are this, these are basically the front. These are really just markers. And then these are, uh, leadership mar or command markers for the different theaters. Then you have your political markers. And then you have like these tiddlywinks, which are, uh, translucent in the color of the di three different nations. And those are, uh, clandestine markers that help you, uh, t you know, determine control of these, uh, colonies and countries for uh, victory points. Um, you also have some of these markers as well um, to help mark the global effects. I'll explain that in a second, but this also are marked on the, the atomic research track. The Russians are trying to steal the uh, research plans. The Americans or the U.S. are trying to advance it to get the bomb. And uh, that's one of the conference issues here. And that that will play into not only victory points, but also it's a but what, there's like three conditions for Japan to surrender, and that's one of them. Uh, Germany surrendering, having that, and then having uh, Russia be advanced to at least Man Manchuria, then Japan will automatically surrender without having to take it over. So um, so that's your components. Um, oh, and then you, of course, you've got the military forces, which are just cubes for the Germans, the Japanese, and then the gray are both either the German Navy or the Japanese Navy. And then, of course, you have some uh, brown here or, or the Italians. In the training scenario, you don't use the German Navy or the uh, Italian Army because it's, it's so advanced in the war that they are no longer a factor. So, um, so the components are fine. Um, then you got some player aids here. You get three of these, which are, are, are nice in that they give you the sequence of play. They give you the victory point schedule. And then the rest of it really is the bots. So if you're playing, uh, if you're, let's say the Russians and playing against the, the United States or the, um, and or the UK, then this is the, deci the decisions for the bots. You know, there's, this is the the uh, conference side. You know, there's going to determine the agenda and determine the meeting, and then it goes into the clandestine networks and political. That's these uh, colonies and countries, and then you get to the military segment, which basically it's kind of built in that you have to advance on the track. There's some limitations, but main, mainly you have to advance on the front each turn. So that's going to always kind of continue going. But you have bots for each one of the three countries. This is a what they say, and there's a zero to three player game, so you can just play the bots and have the bots do do all the heavy lifting, uh, and you're just kind of moving stuff around. Um, or you can play against two bots, or you can play two people against one bot, however you want to play the game. Uh, it's not a complete uh, automated AI. You still have to make some decisions. It kind of gives you, there's some rolling some dice and telling you what cards to choose, like for agenda, because the high card gets to pick the first conference issue and puts it on the track and, and advanced on the conference issue based on the difference. And then also talks about advancing issues, that, but there's still some decision to be made uh, in the game. It's, it, it's not a complete 
uh, contained AI telling you everything you do for the bot, you still got to make some some decent decisions uh, or reasonable decisions for the bots in the game, but it still plays pretty well. Uh, this game, I think, shines as a multiplayer game. I think this is best played with three players. You get the full feel of this board, which is, the, in my opinion, the, the, the tug of war here is really kind of the, the most of the gameplay. Once you get to this board, it's kind of decided uh, how this played out is really going to decide kind of how this is going to go. This is really just some die rolls. Um, there's a lot more decisions for the players with uh, placing a clandestine or political markers on here, but advancing to the fronts are 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 kind of set once you once you put out your uh, once you get your uh, 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 offensive support. However, you get it off this board and put it onto this board. Um, that's just my opinion. I think this there's a lot uh, there's a lot more interaction. There's a lot more gameplay there's a lot more decisions if you're playing multiplayer uh, i think it plays fine solitaire uh it's not too hard to set up and tear down so that that's a nice factor there's not a ton of components you know there's some solitaire games i like to play have really good solitaire play but they take they have so many components they take so long to set up that you know they don't make it to the table as much because it takes a lot of time and i if i'm playing a solitaire game i want to be playing it i don't want to be setting it up um so uh this plays fine solitaire but i think this probably in my opinion i think shines as a as a multiplayer game you know three three players in there um so that's your components um oh and you have these uh these uh conference cards there's there's 10 different conferences so if you want to play the full game it's it's 10 conferences but there's three different iterations for each of the conferences, so there's a lot of replayability there. You kind of shuffle those up and pick one of the, one of the the three different alternatives. So as you play the game, um, you can play it multiple times, and it's going to play a little bit different because the conferences are going to play different. Plus, you know, your your 21 leaders, you're going to shuffle those, and you draw seven a turn, and then you reshuffle on odd turns. Um, so that that's going to change up. And then, of course, you know, the bots are going to do something different. Or if you're playing against a human player, of course, they do things different. So there's quite a bit. There, this is definitely not a a solved puzzle. There's there's a lot of gameplay in this game. So let's talk a little bit about gameplay. So the the goal of the game is to the AI is really German and Japan, Germany and Japan uh, of course, if you're playing against the bots, then then the other allied powers are going to be are, are going to be kind of somewhat AI did well or, or 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 controlled by the bot or have some of the decisions made by the bot as well. But basically, um, the goal of the game is to get Germany and Japan to surrender. It's it's World War II. This is a very uh, abstract and more political version of World War II. Uh, really from the eyes of, of the three main powers of United States, UK, and um, Russia. So that is your goal, is to get these two surrender on this uh, board, but most of the activity takes on place on this board. And as I said, the first thing you do on your turn, you're going to turn over whatever conference is and read over what it does. It will set the stage. It will do things on on, the, on both boards, actually and kind of set the stage and it might also knock out a leader or make the leader you know inactive or do something to the leader where they're they attend the conference but they can't advance a debate uh, but they can't advance uh, an issue but they can debate it i mean th there's a lot of stuff that goes on there so that's all set up by the conference then once you're over here you're going to have your hand of seven cards which are your different statesmen, and you're going to make a decision on uh, setting the agenda. The first thing you do is set the agenda, and you're going to pick one of these, and you're not going to ignore anything else on the card, and you're just going to use it for its number. And the, uh, the highest number wins, and then you take the difference between the highest number and the lowest number, and then that uh, the winner gets to take one of these issues and advance it that far on their track. Then the game starts. You're going to be basically... Um, picking issues and debate you know well then after after that first issue is decided then you go around a couple of times till everybody picks two issues conference issues and they'll be put in the middle here then the game starts in earnest you're going to be taking your cards and 
you know, like say the Russians go, then they can play this guy and move an issue uh, three, you know, from the center. Let's say this directed uh, offense is in there. And if played on a director of offenses, you place an offensive support for our, uh, marker in the Eastern Front. So you would take this three here and then move this up three on their track. And then an offensive support would be able to be put in the Eastern Theater here. And so uh, so that, that gets you some, some support already. Normally you have to spend production to get a support. And this counts as two on your, for your die roll. Uh, which you know you have to roll basically you have to get have enough support to defeat the forces so if you're going against let's say two german forces that's four and um so you're gonna need to have at least four support plus your front counts as two so that would give you six to four so you'd have to roll uh a two or less on a 10-sided die so that's how the front advances over there so um so if once I advance an issue, let's say I advance this three, then it would be it goes around to see if anybody wants to debate it. And if you debate it, you you play a card, and then move it back in your direction, whatever number you played. So if I played this one, I'd move it one. Or if I played a you know bigger number like a five, then it would go one, two, three, four, five. I'd move it all the way over to here on 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 the U.S. track if the U.S. one was going to debate it. Um, and so that goes back and forth till everybody's played all their their cards. And again, you have seven plus your leader, um, and the leader's kind of special. They uh, they have a big whopping seven, uh, and uh, they can debate an issue. Issue depending on if if they're not limited by this, then they generally can, are active and can advance issues or debate issues. And if they advance an issue, that can only be debated by another leader. So that's and then when you use them, sometimes there's negative effect like. Uh, Stalin's got paranoia, uh, Churchill drinks a lot, so he's got health issues, and Roosevelt can die. In fact, in, in this game I just played, Roosevelt did die, and Harry Truman came in to effect. And his weaknesses is inexperience, but once he gets the atomic bomb, which he had, then he, he's up to full strength. So again, there's a lot of conditions that are going on in this game as well. So basically, you're going to be playing a tug of war with these different issues, and then after that round is done, whoever wins the conference, you know, wins gets a conference winner token, and that's going to be worth five victory points at the end. Um, and if you win, but depending on which one of these things you win, you get different effects on usually on this board over here on the military board. But for example, if you win global, then you can move these tokens here to your side like so russians won a global issue here and they moved it to, to communist cadets and that affects um political alignment over here and i'll talk about that in a little bit uh the uk won a global effect and they, they got colonialism and that affects again the political uh, uh tokens that are over here a lot of these other tokens are dealing with production uh the british have uh, the uk has four U USR has three and the United States has six, but the but you know if you you can actually steal the U.S. production if you put that issue out there and get it on your side, then you actually get some of the U.S. production. Everybody's trying to glob onto the U.S. and get their production. So there's also theater control. Uh, if you are control the theater, you're automatically going to get either a naval support or an offensive support on on one of the theaters. That's very helpful. Um, you need naval support to do amphibious invasions. And every time you see a little anchor there, that's an amphibious. So you need a certain amount of naval support. Usually it's three, but like Normandy, it's it's I think it's five. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here that translate over to here. Uh, and the, the really the two major things that translate over to here. Are one are the support, right? You're trying to get these offensive support tokens to help your die roll to advance the fronts. Uh, the second thing is the uh, the Paul Mill or the Paul military political military situation. Um, let's talk about the uh, offensive support first. So every turn you're going to try to advance, and depending on what you're facing. So, like if 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 you were facing trying to advance this British track here, and there was two um, Japanese there. This counts as two. Each one of those counts as two. So you're not you're going to fail because you're you're, you're going to roll. You're at minus two on a ten-sided dice. But if you let's say you had 
one, two, three support there. So you had three times two, two is six, plus two is eight. Eight, uh, take out four there. So now you have to roll a four. So you have to roll a four or lower on this dice. Three, got it. So you would advance on that track. Uh, if you're trying to advance on a amphibious, then you have to have at least three naval support as well as the, the, the numbers or the factors that I just went over. Um, the United States on the, in Asia, the uh, United States have the two tracks that they advance on. Uh, Brit UK has one and Russia has one. In Europe, uh, U.S. has one, the Western Theater, the U.K. has the Mediterranean Theater, and the um, Russia has the Eastern Theater. Plus, there's an Arctic Theater, which is kind of handled a little bit differently. And that, that's a lot how you base, that's how you win the game, is by advancing and getting to Japan, but you also have victory points along the way. If you hit some of these uh, targets here, you're going to get... Uh, the victory points that are listed for whatever unit that is. And sometimes, like if you the United States advances here, they're not getting the victory points. It's UK, USSR gets the victory points. So there, there are some different things on the track of, of who gets things as you advance. Uh, and again, so a lot of what you're trying to do is get support and production to um, build up the war effort over here. The other side game that's going on, but really adds up to a lot of victory points, are these countries and colonies. And so there are these certain things like uh, these, these objectives or these conference issues where you get one um, political marker and three clandestine markers. And again, the clandestine markers are these translucent kind of tiddlywinks. And then the political markers are these, you know, these round uh, cubes here. And so what you're trying to do there is if you win those, you're able to uh, place those on the board. And you basically, it's a situation you have to, you kind of place the clandestine first. You can have up to two clandestine in one of these boxes that are countries or colonies. And then you can place uh, one of your political on there if you already have a, a clandestine there and you can only have one per area. Now, the, the clandestine uh, are going to be worth one uh, victory point per, co per country or colony, and these political activations are going to be worth three victory points. So that really adds up a lot of victory points. So there's the, kind of this political struggle that's going on amongst the three powers of, of you're basically kind of preparing for the end of the war, right? I mean, you're trying to carve up the world once uh, Japan and Germany are knocked out and where is your influence going to be? Where is your political influence is going to be? And you have to have some clandestine forces there first then to establish your political influences. So there's a whole kind of separate game on there. So the bulk of this board here is to get offensive support or or direct offensive support. You know, you can tell the United States, hey, you, you have to give some support to this one area. Uh, and that might not be what they want to do, but hey, they could have won it in the conference here. Or you're trying to get these uh, Paul Mills where you're trying to get clandestine and political activation because it, it all, at the end of the game, you know, it's all going to add up to victory points. Um, so that's basically kind of an overview of the components and the gameplay. Uh, in this game, uh, uh, the United States ended up prevailing. I was playing the United States um, and uh, it was pretty close though. The, the, uh, UK had a really strong last round, um, and Russia just really couldn't get off off very well. Uh, and uh, uh, from a historical standpoint, Roosevelt died at at, at the last conference, uh, and then this guy died of health, and this guy uh, was killed in an ambush. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff historically that that can happen in this game. So when when somebody dies or killed or arrested, they're, they're, the cards are moved from the game and you don't get it anymore. And as I said, on odd number turns, you're reshuffling stuff back up. So um, th th these start cards are recycled. You know, the the leaders cards are are the uh, your statesman cards are going to be recycled uh, during during the game. Um, so the United States really did it. Uh, UK got a lot of their points by these colonies and countries, as you can see here with the political activation. 
went really strong on uh, Pacific Theater, but they, they really didn't advance much on this track, and they were too far away of getting any real victory points. The United States really gobbled up some victory points on uh, on this track, uh, and of course, you know, getting into Japan and getting into Germany was, uh, that's eight points each, so that was that that was the difference in the game right there. If you look at the look at the board over there, that that really did it. Getting the A bomb that actually benefits both the UK and the United States. Uh, and we had the conditions for Japan to surrender, but um, it uh, this just happened the same turn, and that uh, and so the United States was able to get in there anyway. Um, I like the game. I think it plays very well. As I said, it's enjoyable, solitaire, uh, and there's a lot of replayability in that you can try different bots. You can try, try, you know, next time I think I might try the Russians, right? Because they look like they were really struggling. And when I played this multiplayer, they've, they've kind of struggled a little bit. So I might try them. I might try playing them against, uh, the U S and the UK bot and see uh, more of a challenge. Can I, can I get them? over the hump uh and how do i get the cards uh united states started off really i had really good cards early russia didn't have very strong cards and uk had its best cards on the last conference here the the training game is only three conferences so they just they just was a little bit just a little came up a little short a little bit too late because united states had built up a pretty good lead and had won the first two conferences um i was really able able to establish the board over here whereas you know, uh, Russia and UK won global issues, but that that didn't do as much as what the United States was able to do on the, the military side. So there you have it. This is Churchill. As I said, uh, between the three games in the Statement series, um, this one is closer to Pericles. Uh, Versailles is really kind of its own game. Uh, I really like Versailles, uh, but it's, 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 it's even further away from a war game than than this, and this is relatively abstracted from a war perspective, but um, but I still like Versailles 1919. It's it's a I like a hero game, so that is really right up uh, that kind of alley. That's something I'm very familiar with. I do like this aspect of having the political and the and the military, um, and uh, as I said, this to me is a little bit more accessible than Pericles from Mark Herman. Although Pericles is a really good game. Uh, and not to be confused with the other Pericles, which was by, I think, uh, Martin Wallace, which is another interesting game. And people don't really think about that one too much. But uh, that one has a political and a military side as well to it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I might pull that one out someday and talk about that one. That, that That's <laughs> that's even further removed from from war games in, in my opinion. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. I thought uh, I wanted to, again, thank uh, GMT for sending me this game. I wanted to get some of my thoughts about this uh, out there and talk about it. Love to know your thoughts on this. What do you think about this game? What do you think about any of the Great Statesman uh, series of games? Uh, love to to know your thoughts on those, which one you like, what what, what you don't like, what you do like. Uh, but more importantly, what, what do you think about Churchill and, and this game here? Uh, again, love to know your thoughts. Oh, and uh, w watch my unboxing video. Somebody noted that, oh, I didn't get the 10-sided die. I contacted GMT, and they immediately sent me the 10-sided die that you're supposed to have with this game. So if you're missing the, that game, just contact GMT. They have excellent customer service, and they get it right out to you. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I know your time is precious, so I really do appreciate any amount of time you spend with me. If you listen to a few seconds or listen to my whole uh, dribble drabble, I appreciate it greatly. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.